So I just thought I'd go over a, a sim up again today, going over a few more things with inside it, showing you guys um, some of the things that you might not know about that you can do and so forth. So we'll just get on with it. So as you can see here at the bottom, you've got a settings tab. And if you come into this settings tab, you can set what you want it to do. So you can start it with Windows, run as administrator, start minimizing and so on. Um, you've got the default startup tab, which is my plugin, which is I'm using the Dash Studio. You can minimize it in tray, close it in tray, auto detect current game. So I suggest turning that on so that sometimes when you go into the game, you don't just think, oh, why is my sim hub not working? I'm not getting any data. Um, just simply turn this on. Um, I'm not sure if this is available in the donator version because obviously I run a licensed version, which I highly suggest that you do because you get the full benefits and uh, plus you're contributing towards whatever the creator of Simub, which um, helps him progress it further. Um, it's brilliant software. Let's be honest, if we didn't have it, we'd be pretty stuck. Um, it's a bit like having... Uh, content manager for a set of course if you use that uh, once you go back to the original a set of course it's pretty bland so yeah you can change a lot inside here um you know you can also set like game paths and things the preferred units if you want in mile per hour so if you're like me in the uk and everything's in kilometers an hour you can change it here so it's permanent change the celsius for uh, to the temperature celsius from fahrenheit again pressure unit um, the fuel unit and liters and PSI, these are all UK uh, measurements, so that's why I run those. Um, as you can see, as you come down, you can change it also to a dark theme. I don't like the bright white. I like it to all be in dark. Everything I run on my computer is in dark mode. <clears throat> you can also change the user interface scaling here from 100 and, and onwards. So that's another great feature. Um, if we just go to uh, available properties... Again, it shows you all the things with inside uh, Simub that it can control. So if you're wanting to, wanting to see some particular information, you can just scroll down in here. It's got a long, long list of all the different things. So you can just literally scroll all the way down to the bottom and see. So as you can see, um, I run a 3090 graphics card. So it's showing you the, the load, the clock you know the memory used and it tells you all that information and you can display that on uh, say you on your tablet or your five inch screen maybe if you've got one or even if you're using a phone um using dash studio you can display all that information even on a seven segment module or an lcd screen any device that works within simub as long as you can see that data with inside here it will display it on your on your uh, product so just coming back down to the settings tab if we come back up here and go to plugins here you can see all the uh, plugins that uh, simob will cover so for instance i don't have the belt tensioner turned on because i've no need for it so it won't display it on the left hand side um obviously dash studio there's so many different things inside here that you might want to just check they're on like I have a, a plugin for using a gear indicator. This is what use, is used by this. Um, and, and look, if you come down here to like Thrustmaster, you can actually control the FFB in game with the Thrustmaster if you turn it on. Inside the controls and events. And you just literally come up to Thrustmaster Manager. And you can adjust all the FFB and so on in here. So if you've got that, then make sure you turn it on and use that facility and that function. <clears throat> You also want to make sure you've got the UDP relay on if you're wanting to use it in games like Automobilista 2 and Project Cars where they use the UDP plugin. And it says there it allows it to receive data from a game that are mainly like Codemaster and things. So if you have not got that turned on, that might be one of the reasons why you can't get it to work. So make sure that you have. Um, and again, if you just come up to like uh, Arduino. This is where you get all your information for your screen. So, you know, like the time screen is the green line identifies where we are at the moment. The main screen is what you'd see in the race. So obviously these are some of the seven segment display modules that I've used in the past. Um, I don't run all of these now. Um, I concentrate on just keeping it all tidy and having just a five inch screen with all the information on that. Um, and I just add to it and add to it. I did used to have like, as you can see here, uh, the tyre temp showing on a LCD screen. Um, obviously, the front left, front rear, uh, front right, rear left, right, uh, rear right. So again, you just put that information in there, as you can see, front left, and then uh, front right, rear left, rear right, and then obviously race position. So I added that is a text, as you can see, it's a text icon. I put that in as text, and then obviously I put bracket, 
and then the position and then that information here in the property format so obviously if you're in 10th position it would display 10 there so i could just quickly look at that screen have a quick look at my tire temps again another format of that um, you know i had a lap time on there uh, race position and obviously you can just drag and drop these modules to where you want them to to display the data and obviously when i were in the seven segment displays this is the information i had on there so obviously we had rpms again another one with rpm and one with speed and miles per hour so these are some of the dashboards that i used to run um the seven segment display modules and the lcd's crystal screens um, I've done other videos on them as well, so make sure you look at that. I've done a video called Simul Guide. It's quite an in-depth video. Uh, it's about 35 minutes long, and I go into a, 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 a very in-depth explanation how you can enter all that information. Um, things might have changed a little bit with Inside Simul because obviously it's a, a few years old now, um, but you know, relatively, it's all pretty much the same. But if you have got any questions, then just drop a comment. If you're struggling with something, I'll try and give you some advice or help. I don't mind um, giving you some pointers if you get stuck or you can't upload a sketch and so on. So, you know, don't forget to drop a comment. I really don't mind. So just coming back to this now, if we come back to RGB LEDs, here you can see this is the information that I've got running on some of my uh, LED flags. So at the moment, I've got a seven by seven i think it is sorry no it's a four by four led rgb board down here so yeah it's a 16 led board um i use that just now for a shift light um and then i've got a flag above what i then use using the rgb matrix and as you can see here when i open this test data i just drag this over and this test data allows you to test things um so because uh, i'm purely using this for a flag this is what I see on my LEDs, as you can see here on this device. It's, it's what it's uh, preset and shows. Again, if you turn on blue flag, that's what I'd see now. The LEDs are flashing exactly the same as what you see on the screen. Black flag, that's how it display a black, because obviously we can't produce black LEDs. And the white is a very similar type one, where it's just a constant with a, uh, a black center. Green, and also I use spotter for car left flashing. And I use Spotify for car right flashing. So that's another good feature of uh, Simub and just having the uh, ability to have these flags displayed, especially when you're racing. I know you get the in-game little flags, but it's so much easier to get that uh, LED to flash and just light up in front of you. It instantly lets you know that there's a problem or if someone's at side here and so on. So that's how you look at the RGB matrix. But within the RGB LEDs, you can actually um, just preset anything you want by just adding an effect um, as you can see i've got all these custom formulas in here and this is how i set up my checkered flag um so i can because some for some reason simub doesn't allow you to see a checkered flag but i've actually set a custom formula i've done a direct video on that um so if you just scroll back through my videos and look for setting up a checkered flag within simub um you'll be able to see exactly how i did that and i go through step by step how to do it so make sure you check that one out um, I've done lots of videos on Simub as well. Um, I've really studied this uh, software for about four and a half years now, probably even longer, maybe five, um, and really got to the bottom of it and understood it the best I can. Um, it is quite daunting to a lot of newbies um, and people who have not used it before, but that's why I try and produce these videos as often as I can. Um, not many people put uh, videos on back when I started. There's a few more people doing things now, but... You know, it's um, it's a lot easier if we all just keep putting videos on and people are constantly adding information for everyone to check out. So um, if we just pop back up here, if we come into display and alerts, this is for the, if you're running the Max 72219 uh, board, which is for the gear indicators and so on. This is the basically where you want to look now. Um, before this software didn't have the ability to be able to test it um, you had to go into a game but now we've got the uh, availability to change the brightness the orientation of the display and the format um, the font that style that it's in so that's another brilliant function as it, again simul just constantly getting better and better all the time it's always getting updated and whatever's always adding to it and that's why we get a lot of updates as you can see here 
I need to update mine to the latest version um, because obviously new games come out. Um, there might be a bug or there might be something that wasn't working right that someone's let him know within Discord and so on. So, you know, there's so many things. The the seven segment modules is the TM1638 displays. Again, I've done a video on how you can make one of these um, and you can adjust the uh, intensity of the brightness of it here. Obviously, you can reverse the display so you can actually like flip it upside down. If you, if you mounted it wrong, for instance, and you came in and you were like, oh, it's upside down because you weren't aware, you can, or if you might, you know, you might want the LEDs because the LEDs are on the board. You might want the LEDs at the top. Um, rather than at the bottom and then you can do that so again it's just all this uh, versatility of it so with inside gauges we've got the uh, tachometer sen settings here um, you can just click on advanced calibration so this is where you'd set the uh, uh, the actual needle for each uh, individual incrementation so if you wanted to click on test 1000 the needle would ping around to a thousand rpm and if it was slightly above say at like 1100 or maybe like a little bit lower say 9950 you just adjust this uh, offset to, to suit and then you can get it calibrated up absolutely perfectly same with the boost gauge you can put in the settings as you can see um, from the boost gauges that I supply on my uh, on my eBay page um, these settings are what make it work so it runs to the two bar and back to the zero and then round to the uh, minus uh, orientation so again if you're running a speedo um, I know a lot of people run the BMW 36 cluster but also you can use other speedometers as long as they are uh, capable of working within Simub, you can again adjust all that in there and and so on that goes on with the fuel gauge the temperature gauge i don't want to bore you guys too much um but you know i'm just trying to give a, a rundown on everything um if we come over into controls you can actually preset a button to to flick to next screen and so, uh, so if you're wanting to for instance um scroll let me just go back to the screens if you're wanting to see all this information if you look on the right hand side it says in game in game idle sorry in game in game in game so basically when you've got it on this on here these are the ones that you can flick through by seeing on your screen so you could literally map a button for next screen next screen for the seven segment <clears throat> You can also turn the brightness up and down with it. So, or you might just want to go straight back to your first screen. So, for instance, if we were to just map a button in here and press a button, and then if we came over to the screens, the next screen would be air temp, then laps, last lap, and so on. And what you can do is if you wanted to see, for instance, brake temp, you could just come in here, and then at the top, you get the option of in game screen or both, or idle screen, and so on. And then when you save it, it gives you the little in-game. So obviously it'd cycle through that screen so you can see it. So if we just pop over to my hardware, this is where we would uh, see our devices that are connected. As you can see, I've got the LEDs. The gear indicator is not connected at the moment. The shift light. Um, if, we just, if you just click on apply changes or scan for new devices, it will then find, as you can see, I've got a little reset button on my gear indicator. I've just give that a click and it's come back on as connected. Um, so you can just see what exactly it does and it tells you all the information about it within here. So as a few people um, that I've seen online sort of saying, oh, I can't rotate my display anymore. Or it doesn't let me. It's not in the function. What you do is you click on this drop down arrow and if you just slide down, you've got your rotation here and then you can pick portrait, landscape, etc. So if you have been struggling um, rotating like the uh, 64 LED matrix for uh, using for a flag like I just showed earlier in this video then that's how you'd rotate it um, it tells you everything about the COM port the board rate obviously if you're finding that you're running really fast LEDs um, as in like the flashing of it you might need to up the board rate to suit and you can just play with all that information in here by changing it just here you can change the serial speed you might want to just turn it to sort of like 250,000 and give that a try Again, you can click on forget this device. If you just want to not see it, you can turn them on and off with these sliders and you can also drag and drop them in order. Um, and this does make a difference, especially if you're running screens. Um, if you're running more than one sort of seven segment module and you're running them into daisy chain, um, in order for it to see them, you need to make sure they're in order in here so that they show in order with inside uh, the screens that you want to see. So for instance, if we wanted to see this screen, then this screen, if that screen is not um, is is gapped from another one, it won't display that information because obviously it sees that gap inside. So 
that's just a basic rundown today of um, Simub. Um, if you've got any questions, like I said, guys, drop them in the comments. Um, I don't mind answering whatsoever. You know, bear with me if I don't get back to you instantly. I try to get back to everyone as soon as I see the notification, um, and I will um, help you. Like I said, no problem. Um, if you've got any questions or if you'd like me to do any videos on any more information with Inside Simub, also leave a comment about that because you know I'm always trying to provide content and sometimes it can be quite difficult to think of ideas. So if you guys are trying to build something, make something and you're really struggling, then just ask below and I can do a video on it and I can actually do it direct for you as well. So anyway guys, that's it for today's video. Please hit that like button, please subscribe to my channel. And please hit that bell notification for all my content so that you get notified as soon as you see these helpful videos. And I will see you in the next one.